call this meeting to order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Jack Collars. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. If you have a cell phone on you, please silence or shut it off. Is there a motion for approval of the agenda? Second. With Mr. Chair, with one addition that I emailed out to Master Service Agreement with Baker Tilly, we'll put that uh, under the administration items as number four. Okay, but kind of regard uh, close to number three, but okay. Right. I'll move the agenda item under. Okay. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay. Consent agenda. Move the consent agenda. Second. Motion, second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, passes. Public appearances, you get three minutes each, whoever would like to come forward. You sit at the desk, state your name and address, you get three minutes. Anyone? My name is Valida Cordes, uh, 46882 547th Lane, Cortland, Minnesota. I'm here speaking regarding the um, gun club improvement enlargement. Um, I'm speaking more today to the board, to the county, as opposed to towards the Michael Blitzes. Um, I know I've already brought up as to what this will do to our neighborhood as far as for safety and um, our peace and everything, and apparently that has not been really considered, although I do appreciate the two gentlemen who did vote in favor of us last time, keeping our safety and peace. Um, <clears throat> what I want to bring up today is simply a reiteration of uh, Minnesota Statute 97B um, and the issue that apparently the county has, the zoning board has um, stated that we have not got a corral in the location we do have and that we would have had to have a feedlot permit to get that. We certainly do not have a feedlot, um, and I would recommend that our director of the zoning board look into the difference between a feedlot and a corral for four pet horses. Um, we do have a corral in existence. It's been there for a while. Um, there's been livestock on the property long before we were ever there. As a matter of fact, there was a horse there when we moved there. Um, my question is, I know that the zoning board, at least I believe three members, did go to the gun club property and check out uh, what their plans are and, and what their improvements have been so far and, and things that they've done. But no one was willing to check out our properties, the neighbors in our area, to even check that we had a corral that might be close to the property line. Um, so at this point, the um, shooting shed, the shooting line that the Michaels have put up for the long-range rifle is currently too close, according to Minnesota Statute 97B, to our existing corral. Now, according to 97B, there's also no time limit on that. So a property that is a farm or any sort of property that could have a livestock corral could technically put up a corral at any time. This corral is existing, but perhaps Storings want to put up a corral along their line. Um, perhaps we want to put up more corrals. It doesn't matter. It is existing. Um, my point being that perhaps the Nicola County Zoning Board and, um, and anyone who is considering passing this as it is, is not only doing a detriment to our neighbors in the area and not presuming to care about the safety or the well-being or the land use of the neighbors, but also doing a disservice to the Michaelitzes. They're putting a lot of money into setting this up. They've already put a lot of money into that building in a spot that it's going to need to be moved from. Um, when they start shooting from it, we are going to be contacting the sheriff. And the sh uh, chief deputy has seen the corral, so it does exist. And I'd welcome anyone to come see that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is that microphone on, Mr. Chair? Good 
Good morning, uh, Joe Mike. Let's 41474 Judson Bottom Road, North Mankato. Um, there was concern about the distance from their corral. Uh, the local conservation officer, Thor Nelson, had come out to the property and he measured the distance from the shooting house to their uh, corral. And the corral, uh, he, he obviously knows the definition uh, of, of the code section uh, better than I do. But he just wanted to write a report, which he wrote a report, and uh, we have a copy of his report that was submitted uh, up in St. Paul. But the distance from the shooting house to their corral is 635 feet, and it's, which is more than 500 feet. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that you all understood that and some third party had done the measurement. And we have, we have that report that we plan to give to Mandy just to keep in the file. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else? Okay, we're going to close off the public. I'm here. Oh, sorry. I looked down at the paper too early. Sorry, John. I wasn't jumping fast enough. My name's Brenda Golden. I live at 46194 561st Avenue, New Ulm. My distance or location from the gun range will be inside of a mile. Between my property and the gun range is m &R Pavers uh, demo pit. Um, I have a few questions that I just didn't get clarification for from the last encounter, and I'm wondering if anybody can answer me these questions now. Is this facility going to be public or private? And the corporate events are going to be weekends or during the week? Is there going to be any kind of military assault rifles, as in AK-47s or AR-15s allowed? Um, is there an airstrip? I mean, I'm hearing that there was going to be an airstrip built at the very beginning, but I'm not sure if I've heard anything since then. Is there an airstrip in place, or is there going to be any kind of air traffic above our, our homes? Also, um, if there's a neglectful discharge like we possibly, probably, have had already come across our land and nearly hit my, my nephew, is there any kind of um, is there any kind of corrective or preventive action that happens in accordance with that? What is the process of finding out how, when, and why it happened? Is there any kind of a public acknowledgement when it happens when we have an escape of sorts? Is there any kind of um, notice put out to the neighborhood? Is there any kind of um, uh, interaction at all? Is this kind of like a private and kept close to the vest? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, is there like the people that are going to be monitoring the gun use of these individuals that may or may not be familiar with guns? Um, if there's a training session, uh, is there like a mentor with each person? How do we prevent escapes from going past the berm? I understand the berm's been um, bulked up or built up since the last escape and inside of the last two weeks. And uh, I'm on good terms with the people next door that worked on it, so I, I have no concerns at all about that. I just want to know what's going to happen in the future to pre prevent us from being in a target zone. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks. Ryan, I'm going to lean on you. We really don't answer questions <coughs> in proceedings like this. No, we do not. Mm -hmm. So if it, someone would like to address some of these, have their own public appearance, that would be fine, correct? So people can have public appearances now, but we don't answer questions. No. But when the board has your discussion on the next agenda item, this agenda item, um, you could raise some of these questions. Any more public appearances? Yes, David. 
Yes, come on. Sign, sign in like you have had to in the past, and that allows the street. Yes. Mm -hmm. My name is David Stirring, 430 Ziski Road, Cortland, Minnesota. We own the property just to the south of the uh, River Ridge. I asked last time, asked uh, Mike Litz's, whether the pistol shooting targets could not be in the opposite direction instead of towards our property. Roughly, the pistol target range berm, as, as proposed, is 53 yards from our property line and the shooting spot about 146 yards, both which are very inadequate for pistol shooting. I was told that uh, bluff setback rules would not allow the shooting direction to be changed in the opposite direction away from our property instead of towards it. I questioned this with uh, environmental services and uh, the answer was that there is no bluff setback rule that would prevent the change of direction. And that is what I would like to see because the pistol target ranges and the short range pistol shooting will be very dangerous for us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dave. Anyone else? <coughs> I guess we'll close that part of things. Property services. Mr. Chair, the, the issue that's um, before the board for the property services is to address the issues raised um, at the last um, or two meetings ago regarding the conditional use permit filed by the Mike Litzes. Uh, the matter before you is two ish or three issues essentially. The board had approved the um, conditional use permit reserving two issues. That is the um, consumption of alcohol um, before and during shooting events um, on the premises. The second was um, the type of ammunition that was going to be utilized um, on the range and then finally approval of the findings that were then drafted based upon the presentations at that board meeting. So the um, proposed findings and the proposed two additional conditions were included in your board packet. My recommendation to the board at this time is to take each of those conditions in turn, starting with the alcohol condition, followed by discussion of the ammunition condition, followed by uh, the um, review of the proposed findings of fact and conditions. The board has already approved um, the conditional use permit itself and now it's just ensuring that the findings that were drafted reflect um, how the board wants those findings to um, be memorialized to support the decision that was reached at, the, at that board meeting. Okay. And for the board's benefit, the um, Alcohol um, restriction condition is found at number <coughs> 11 of the conditions that were presented to the board. And Mr. Chair, we're recommending that all the, or each condition be addressed separately, correct? Yes. Right, first yeah. the alcohol, then the ammunition, yep. then the findings. Are there any feelings on the alcohol, or do you want to give a synopsis of? The condition that was presented um, based upon the board's um, discussion was the consumption of alcoholic beverages at the facility by shooting participants is prohibited both prior to and while the participants are engaging in shooting activities. And I realize now there's a typo in there. But its activities not activates. Is there a motion in regards to the alcohol policy presented? Mr. Chair, I would move that. Second. No 
motion and a second. Discussion? <clears throat> yes, Terry. Well, Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask a couple of the questions that were asked because I think as you were <clears throat> leaning, I think we can get some of the answers. So, for example, I understand <clears throat> we were asked, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Ms. Golden, the public or private nature of the operation. I understand that it is a, uh, actually, I don't know whether it's a public or private facility. And I assume Mount County Attorney I can ask them if it's a public or private facility. I think you can ask that question. Would you act, like them to step forward? I, I think that's the only way we're going to get the answer. And I'd like to just stick to the questions. Sure. Um, it will be both. It will be public, but we will have memberships available. Okay. If I understand that, the membership, members will probably get a discount on things compared to the public. Exactly. Discounted pricing with a membership. Uh, will there be corporate events held at the facility? Yes. And is there any time frame when they are or are not permitted? Uh, really no prohibitions. It would be during regular business hours. Okay. Was there a corporate event held on August 1st? No. Was there a wedding reception held on August 1st? There, um, not as part of the business operations at all. We, as personal use of our private land, um, we have friends that were having their wedding reception at their farm close by, and um, we have an empty storage shed building that as the date drew nearer, we thought perhaps that would be a convenient location for them. We did talk to um, multiple people at the county to get the green light that we wouldn't be in violation of anything that we're applying for or proposing, and we were told that as private landowners, that would be within our rights of personal land use. We weren't um, paid anything, we didn't charge anything, we didn't offer any services or any goods at all other than just the, the use of a building. So there may be events that held there that are not related to shooting? Not at all with the business operations going forward, no. No, I'm sorry, I didn't say with regarding the business operations. Um, I guess we would have to maybe get clarity on our rights as landowners of the personal use of our property if we could do things outside of the business operations. Okay. Uh, are there plans for an airstrip? Not, no. We, um, Joe might have to speak on this. He's the pilot. He does have a, a small, we have a small airplane that can be land, can land on grass. There is no airstrip. Um, Mr. Storing asked about the bluff set are the uh, pistol range and going in the opposite direction? Yeah, I did talk to Dave after the last meeting. The in, in that too, we I don't think we would be able to relocate the road. The bluff setback probably has nothing to do with the berms themselves, but to shift the direction of fire for the pistol range, we would have to relocate the road going around the pistol range just to keep the property safe. And I don't know how that road would fit in with the bluff setback on that southern boundary of that field. Is that a possibility? We are open to exploring anything. I mean, I will tell you as a shooter, it would be advantageous to be shooting not in the direction of the sun, but to be shooting in the northerly direction. So uh, we are in the process right now, we've got about seven things that we need to work with property services before we can get our conditional use permit issued. And the grading plan and the final site map is part of that. So, yeah, we're open to, to anything that we can do. Mr. Chair, I don't have anything else at the moment. I have a question. What is the range on a high-power pistol, like a 357 or something? Do you have any idea? That I may have to defer Ryan? to. I'll let you respond. It, you could just assume it's similar to a rifle, a little less. It's a little less powder, so. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Vote on the alcohol motion now? Oh, no, I just, I just want to make more questions oh, for Ms. Michaels. Oh. Well, uh, you can sit down, I think. Oh, okay. I think she's waiting for you to invite her to, she can sit down, well, right? You can sit down. Okay. There's no Thank more you. questions. That's, any other comments or questions before we vote? Okay, all in favor on the alcohol ordinance? Or should this be our roll call? It's not an ordinance. It's not an ordinance. Condition. So we still have to vote on it, right? But it's a condition, not an ordinance. Okay. 
So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Passes. Okay, ammunition. Michelle? That is condition number 30 in the proposed findings as drafted as drafted states firearms that are larger than 39 caliber are not permitted on the rifle range for commercial use except for muzzle loader and black powder style firearms the commercial use of tracer armor piercing incendiary steel core explosive steel jacketed and accelerated accelerator ammunition is prohibited Shotguns that are 12 gauge or smaller are allowed to be used at the facility. Mr. Chair, yes. and maybe I'll ask Ryan and just to facilitate things, uh, we were asked about whether the term was called military assault weapons would be permitted. Would they be excluded under this condition? No, I don't think so. So the most, most people don't have an AK-47, but uh, AR-15s are, um, they look like an assault rifle, but they're semi-automatic. Um, they would be permitted because they're less than 39 caliber. Most of them, 20, 20 some caliber, right? So, so they would be permitted. But they're semi-automatic. They're not fully automatic rifles, which means you have to pull the trigger individually versus just holding it. Mr. I, I admit some of my ignorance in knowing the effect in mm -hmm. terms of safety. I think we all have ignorance, Terry. The question I had is, uh, you were saying for the shotgun it was going to be steel shot only? Is that correct? Well, on the sporting plays course, yeah, yeah steel shot only. Okay. Do you police that somehow? We will. I mean, we're going to have uh, lots of signs. Checking okay. people to make sure that that's what I was hoping. M could, could you come on up, please? Would that be okay? Because I have a question as well, and it, we probably should get it all on the microphone. Sure. Um, we were asked about, I think the term was called neglectful discharge, and I know you just mentioned signs. Uh, I'm just interested in your understanding of what happens if a stray bullet or bullets enter private property of one of your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> we, we will be, um, do everything in our power to make sure that that doesn't happen by making sure that uh, the people using the facilities are, um, understand the rules, understand the safety. Everybody will have to check in before they go to any of the ranges and they will be briefed on the range itself and uh, safety. I would, I would be really surprised with the height of the berms and everything we're doing that there would be a stray bullet. Um, if there was, um, first of all, everything that would be, you know, behind the berm, there's, there, you know, it, the bullet will not reach anybody's residence or, or It'd be, it's just very, very low risk that, that somebody could be hit by a stray bullet. I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, you mentioned that you were saying it'd be very low risk that a bullet <coughs> would reach a residence, but would it be an e it'd be a somewhat greater risk that it would reach their property? Is that correct? Are you using residence as the building or the property line? Well, we we. Our goal, and we're very confident we can do this, is make sure that no projectiles leave the property. Okay. And that's, that's number one. And, you know, could it happen? It, it's, it's possible. But uh, if it did happen, uh, you know, my wife and I are, you know, we're, uh, we understand risk. We, we're business people. We, we certainly don't want liability and um, uh, so we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that that doesn't happen. 
Mr. Chair, if I might, yes. I appreciate everything you just said, but my question was, what is your understanding of the process if it does happen? Well, uh, obviously there would probably be a complaint filed and we would deal with that at the time and, and uh, address it. And, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion and second. Discussion? All Third, favor? Clarification, Mr. Chair. So it reads, firearms that are larger than 39 caliber are not permitted on the rifle range for commercial use, except for muzzle loader and black powder style firearms. The commercial use of tracer, armor piercing, incendiary, steel core, explosive, steel jacketed, and accelerator ammunition is prohibited. Shotguns that are 10 gauge or smaller are allowed to be used at the facility. To the writer uh, who created this um, verbiage, what's the difference between commercial use and private use for any of these weapons? Planning and county attorney could answer. Planning and zoning has control over the commercial use of the property itself individuals as private landowners still have certain ability to use their own private property as a use that they deem appropriate. So the planning and zoning action is to address the actions of the gun club, which is what they're seeking <coughs> the conditional use permit for. But I was just trying to draw back to that earlier discussion that we have had between is this a commercial or private club? Is this a public or private club? And I'm just trying to get my head straight as to how that falls into this definition. If the gun club is operating as a business, I, what I understood the answer to that question to be is that they will have members and then anyone who wants to come and use the facility as a, and pay as a public member, not as a member, that would be under the, glove, the gun club business practice and that's what this condition is addressed if the Michaelitzes choose to go out and use their property in a manner that they deem appropriate outside of that business use planning and zoning doesn't cover those activities Terry you have a question I don't know if I have a question or not I agree with your reading of the law correct uh, I I think I'll just make a statement uh, we heard earlier that you have and would con perhaps continue to use your property for private purposes, and you're certainly legally permitted to do that. I, for one, would be deeply affected if I found out that you were using it for private purposes and using ammunition that we're about to, in essence, prohibit for the commercial purposes. I can't stop you. But I'd be pretty mad if we found out that you were having private parties in order to do something that you can't do commercially. And I'm just saying that. It's, not a, it's just an observation. And Mr. Chair, that's, yes. that's why I was trying to bring that up, just to see something like that could happen commercially. Mr. Chair, if I might respond. Yeah. Yes, and, but I think that if, the, if, there, if I understand correctly, if there were no permit involved here and Michaelis just owned the property, they could fire any legal firearm as long as it was fired in a safe manner. And they would include some of the items that would be banned for this commercial purpose. That's my quick understanding. So, there may be some of these weapons that were... Go ahead, please. No, and I don't mean to interrupt, Commissioner, but is this number 30 complete enough or does it just cover the letter of the law well mr Ch mr chair yes sure. and i'll turn to the county attorney who really should be the one i think answering these questions but i'll jump in and say all this permit is about is about a commercial operation on private property that commercial operation under 
our ordinances and under state law is permissible uh, with the uh, recognition that conditions can be placed upon that permit. And so what we've been trying to work on as a board is what are the appropriate conditions that can be placed upon a legal uh, operation that is legal under both county ordinance and state law. We can't limit what you do on your private property or I do on my private property provided that that activity is conducted in a safe manner and is legal. Uh, so I recognize I can't tell any property owner you can't do this in your private property use. I would hope as a measure of good faith to the neighbors not doing something privately that we're saying you can't do commercially would be in, would be consistent with the neighbor's expectations about their own safety. We're, we're totally in agreement with you. I don't know, county, amount of county, if you have anything to add, I may have gotten something wrong. No, I would agree with your assessment. We're here to regulate under our planning and zoning ordinance commercial activity and the purview of what people do on their private property in their personal capacity would not fall under that purview as long as it is safe and permitted by the applicable statutes that govern the activity itself. Madam County Attorney, if we were to vote no on this issue, would that mean there's no restrictions? Or would that mean that the whole project is in jeopardy? No, you already are, well, the permit itself went through reserving yeah. only these two conditions. So if you did not approve this condition or modify this language, then there would be no prohibition on the type of ammunition that is utilized. So if there's discussion of changes to adding um, a specific type of ammunition that wasn't included, for example, that you wanted to include, that certainly falls in the purview of what you reserve for today's action. Anybody else? More questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Findings of fact? So the board, be ha the board has before it the proposed findings that were drafted to include all of the conditions um, recommended by the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission um, and then findings that were modified um, or were developed to reflect both the action of the Planning and Zoning um, hearings that were held, um, public comment, and the conversation and discussion of this issue at the um, board meeting. Mr. Chair? Yes. So, Mr. Chair, I, I do have, I think, a couple of remaining questions about this because I think it's our Please. last opportunity to Please. discuss this. And, Mandy, these questions may be for you. I'm not sure. Uh, my first question is about <coughs> this is in Cortland Township, if I understand correctly. And last time we were here, we had, I believe, two members of the Cortland Township Board. Uh, the questions were about road use, road maintenance. Was the road sufficient for potential traffic? I don't know that the county has ever heard, has heard back from Cortland Township what's going on with the road, road use aspects of this project. And Mandy can correct me if I'm I'm wrong, but I don't believe we've received an official response from the Cortland Township. We've had members of the township board that have come and spoke, um, acknowledging their position, but not with official action from the township board itself. Mandy, could could you come up, please? That'd be great. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Yes, I I could give you some insight on it, also, Terry. Well, that, if you'd like to go first. Well, my understanding is the Cortland Township Board thought when they went to the planning and zoning meetings and made their little speeches, that was their comment. But apparently the law says they have to have a motion and submit it to be acknowledged in the uh, permit. Are you referring to the conditions? Yes. Of these? Um, there is a condition that the township and the applicants come together and create a satisfactory road agreement. Mm -hmm. um, you're correct that the township officials have attended the previous meetings and I believe they did state that they have made no formal action on the road as far as how they're going to resolve the issues out there but they are in discussion with it um, we as planning and zoning cannot issue the conditional use permit until 
that specific condition is satisfied, that we have some type of agreement between the township and the applicants before we can move forward. Um, and there are several other conditions too that need to be resolved before we can issue the conditional use permit. So that is one of them that needs to be resolved. Mr. Chair, for me. Yes. And Mindy, this may not be a question for you, maybe a question for the township, I'm not sure, but um, we know that there have been concerns expressed about children on the road riding bicycles and the like. Is the township empowered to place additional signage along the road? Is that a MnDOT or a county? I just want to make sure that somebody's talking about the safety of the kids riding their bikes <coughs> on that road. I would defer that question to the county engineer. Perhaps he has better sense of signage on the roads. Okay, we, we can wait on that one. Let's, okay. the, the, so we don't do the <laughs> back and forth. Mr. Chair, if I might. Uh, yes, keep going, Terry. Um, there was a mention of the corral um, along the road and uh, the distance of the corral from the range, I think the distance was cited to be 635 feet. This was uh, when Ms. Cordes was speaking. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there was a question about whether it was the right corral and whether you received the conservation officer report. Did you receive the report and is it the distance it's supposed to be? The, yes, we did receive a copy of the initial comments made by conservation officer Thor Nelson. He was on site on July 31st, and based on his measurements, and he goes further into explain how he obtained those measurements and the process that he used, and based on his professional determination, the corral is 635 feet from the shooting shed structure. Is there, do you know, do you happen to know, is there more than one corral? Based on um, the conservation officer's professional opinion and his interpretation of statute, this was what he determined. Okay. I'm fine. Would the pistol range be closer than that? No, the uh, pistol range is located on the west side and okay. south. Okay. Other questions? Oh, you were going to have uh, Seth come up? Well, I do, I do have a question about the. I don't, I'm trying to understand how the road, road safety issues, who's purview and who's signing off for making the satisfactory agreement. So, Mandy, I don't think it's a question for you at that point. Thank you, Mandy. Do you want to talk to this? Or to Carl, is this, is this the sheriff's area or the county engineer's area? <laughs> well, right, yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I understand. I don't think it is your purview. I think it is probably the township's purview. Mm -hmm in terms of the road safety and uh, one can only hope, I said, not only hope, I don't mean it that way, one, uh, I hope that the, count, the township is able to have that conversation to make sure that the safety issues that have been raised by residents are being considered. And we have a Mr. Chair, there, there are certain procedures that are in place that if additional signs want to be placed on a road about how that process can go about. I've not looked at it from a township perspective versus what might be done for changing, for example, the speed limit on a road. I've looked at it from that perspective, but not for some of these other safety issues. Um, but there is a process in place to go about changing that um, should the township want to do that. Okay. Mrs. Cordes? Um, Come forward, please. The, this, the public comment portion of the meeting was closed. I just wanted to let you know that Chief Deputy Carl Jensen did walk in the corral we're talking about, and it's definitely not the one that they're talking about. And Thor has never been to our corral. So perhaps he might let you know where it is. Thank you. It's your decision. Is this a question that board members have, or? I guess we do. Come forward, please, Carl. Make your comment. Right. Question on the corrals is that yeah. the. I'm not, I don't yes. have a yes. question. There's an upper pasture, and when I visited the property, there was one, a smaller, lower corral, I would say. So that doesn't really help us out for the distance. The lower corral is closer to the Mikelitzes than the upper corral. 
by what distance, I can't tell you. All right, thank you. Is there a way that we could put, Mr. Chair, could we put a picture of the beacon up on the, uh, up on the, uh, of the address, up on the screen? You, you want me to give you the, the address? Forty six. Mr. Chair, if I is Commissioner Colors, can I interrupt for just one second before we pull up that photo? Mr. Chair, yes. could we check with the county attorney on what we're to be doing at this point sure. and what is permissible? Okay. The the board has approved the conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. The thing that is before you now is to go through the findings of fact. You can talk about language you may wish to choose to change for those finding a fact that was provided but it's not an opportunity at this point to gather um, information for example about changing your decision to okay. approve or deny the conditional use permit because you the board already voted to approve it okay so we are not going to get the picture then I don't know that that goes to the review of the okay. findings that okay. is before mm -hmm. the board. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, yes. Commissioner, thank you for clarification. Thank you, Michelle. No? Mr. Chair, we need to adopt the findings of fact as presented in our board packet. We have a motion. Motion a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Passes. Okay. Seth? morning mr. chair members of the board and staff a couple items from <clears throat> public works this morning uh, the first being to consider MnDOT detour agreement one zero four four six five eight MnDOT is planning a pavement and culvert rehab project on 99 that will be um, worked on next year 2021 uh, that project will have several center line large culvert replacements and that project will require um, uh, detour. Um, MnDOT is planning to use Kyron Road 5 and 40 as part of, of the detour agreement and that detour agreement is included in your packet for, for your review. Um, this is MnDOT's standard detour agreement. We've passed numerous um, ones of these in the past. Um, the, the detour agreement compensates the county for the anticipated life consumed um, of those those roadways. Um, MnDOT has calculated that reimbursement to the county to be approximately $15,641.11. Also in your packet, towards the back of the agreement, there is a um, map showing what those detour routes look like. There's a stage one and stage two um, component of that. So I'd be more than happy to answer any questions on this item. So motion moved. Second the motion. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Okay, you have another one? Yes, consider MnDOT lighting agreement 1044568. Um, this item is also related to the Trunk Highway 99 rehab project in 2021. Um, the state had inquired if the county would like to uh, participate with uh, providing uh, intersection lighting at the intersections of County Road 13, 17, and 40. Um, the county has in the past uh, uh, participated in interse intersection lighting um, projects with the DOT where we have paved county roads that intersect uh, trunk highway. Um, 
County Road 13 already has intersection lighting and that was installed some years ago when um, 169 was rehabbed, the concrete pavement placed, um, uh, 13 was used as a detail <coughs> route and at that time uh, MnDOT had um, paved a right turn lane on 13, uh, a right hand turn lane on uh, 99 to turn on the 13 and also they installed that intersection lighting to improve safety at that location. Um, so in your packet there is the, the lighting agreement uh, for your review. Um, as part of this agreement, MnDOT will bear all the costs of the installation of the lighting system. The county's responsibility is all for all future maintenance and electrical costs to operate that system. Um, the lights on these lights, uh, the luminaries are LEDs mm -hmm. and they're very um, um, cost efficient. They're very efficient. So more than happy to answer any questions on this. Move the resolution. Come second. The motion is second, Marie. I have a question, Mr. Chair. What about the intersection at the State Hospital? Right at the top of the hill, where you can go into the State Hospital, or you can go in if you're staying this. I, I Boy, I think there is lighting already there. Okay. And that's a city street. I think there is. That's a city street that intersects yeah. from yeah. the north. So. I was just thinking, but if it isn't lit, it should be lit. Yeah, I, I believe sure. that intersection is lit. And they also, you know, they did improvements at that intersection also as part of that 169 detour. Mm -hmm. And I think lights were installed at that time. So, Seth. <coughs> Have they done any solar for inter, inter, you know, intersection lighting like that? Solar installations where you don't have to hook up to the electric You know, utility? I'm not aware of any solar installations for street lighting. Okay. Um, the amount of power probably required for that would require probably some extensive uh, um, battery panel packs. Be, panel would be too big to set up on top of the post. Yes. All right. Any more questions? Do we have a motion in the yes. second, Abby? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Okay, Ryan. Uh, I have one oh, question, sorry. if I may. Yes, ask uh, Sam. Go ahead. Little, how did we fare on 14 after this last round of rain? Uh, we had another decent sized slide. Um, of course, that was. Uh, came about because of the heavy rains that we right. received right down the Minnesota River Valley once again. Mm -hmm. um, and it just keeps hitting this project. Uh, um, highway maintenance went out early Saturday morning to just assess that whole corridor to see what damages uh, they may run onto. And there was definitely another slide. This will be the third slide on the 14 Hill. This one occurred between the old slide and the slide that occurred so um, that whole earlier this that summer. Whole grade is slipping away. Yes, and it's just <coughs> reinforcing um, the decision to add right. to the existing contract that was awarded to Mathwitz for fixing the, the initial slide that this whole slope all the way down the hill is unstable and needs to be completely rebuilt. As long as we're at that end of the county, uh, what about 21 on the river? Did we have some more loss there too? Has that not been a factor with these ones? No additional loss because of this this last rain event, which well, is good. As long as we're asking, Seth, how about Fort Ridgely? Fort Ridgely, um, they had poured. Um, of course, we had that area where the the forms fell out underneath the deck. A 14 by 14 foot um, area of that deck had to be rehabbed. Basically, all the old concrete had to be taken out and a patch poured in. Um, that patch was poured on um, August 14th along with the north uh, concrete rail. Um, we're just waiting to get the required concrete strength on that patch and then the contractor will pour the south rail. Um, once that south rail reaches uh, its anticipated strength, the contractor then will have um, a subcontractor PCI come in and they will mill about an inch off the entire deck in place a low slump overlay. The whole deck? Yes. Yep. That's to mitigate the, the, the new joints because of the, the, of the full depth repair patch that was done, plus there were some finishing issues 
on the last one third of the bridge where um, the concrete deck is a bit open and will allow um, salt and, and chlorides to, to get in that deck. And so by milling that off sure. and coming back to that low slump low overlay, that'll protect that deck for, for a very long time. And the overlay will be how thick? Two inches. Okay. Yeah, mill an inch off, come back with two inches. Those low slump overlays, you always... And two inches will hold up pretty good? Yes. They've been doing low slump overlays on bridges for, for many, many, many years. Yeah, good, good performance. So do you have a estimate of when it'll be open? No, there's a fair amount of work even after the, the concrete part of the bridge sure. work is done. We've got to finish grading out the approaches, um, bring in the aggregate base for the approach roadways. It's got to be paved, and then the erosion control and seating and whatnot all has to occur. And some of this is all dictated by when you get um, your anticipated strengths on those different concrete, concrete pours. And as long as you're here, why don't you give an update to number 12 for the other commissioners? Number 12 is 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 up and running. Uh, Mathewitz is out there um, starting to reconstruct um, the intersections of 21 and 12, where we'll be building right turn lanes and install intersection lighting. Um, they were Yesterday they were removing the aggregate base, the old aggregate base out of that section. Um, they were also beginning their um, mucking um, operation down in the flooded area, and that's where, where the new slopes are going out further than the original road core they are taking out. We're trying to get out three to four feet of that existing mucky bottom. Um, I watched the process for a while. It's going to be a slow process. With a long-reach excavator, you can only scoop out so, so much. Um, what was good to see is that muck was was pretty solid. It wasn't just like they're trying to scoop out soup. So every time he took a bucket, he'd get a nice big bucket of material. So that was uh, that was good to see. Um, slow process. It'll take some time for them to to muck out both sides. Once that happens, we'll install our our um, settlement monitoring uh, equipment, and they will start to fill that area with with crushed rock. And so that's what's currently going on right now. So will the replacement culvert come in during this process or is that gonna be dug out and then set later? Yes, the, the equalization culvert will be placed next year after the surcharge okay. comes off. Surcharge comes off, then they'll dig then the, they'll the trench for, for that pipe. We didn't want to put the pipe in now, load it and have Away. have everything settling and we're going to have differential settlement which would put right. undue stress on that new pipe. Thank and, you. The, and this morning the natural gas guys were back because they didn't put the natural gas line quite deep enough for construction so they're digging oh. next to it with a backhoe and going to drop it in the hole and oh, good. get it deeper. Yeah we have our weekly construction meeting out there today so I'll get another update from the contractor. Okay. Thank you for Any all your questions. Work. For Sal? Anybody? Anything else you want to add? No, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, um, since we're a little off schedule here, can we, I would suggest we take our break now and reconvene at 10.05, if that's okay. It's fine with me. That'd be great. Getting back to order. Brian, do you have some information? I do, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three resolutions, actually four uh, items today. Uh, the first one is a resolution supporting the Southern Minnesota RTCC uh, to apply for phase two funding. Uh, at the August board workshop, SRF Consulting gave a presentation on the Regional Transportation Coordinating Council, or RTCC, in southern Minnesota. Uh, the Mankato, North Mankato Area Planning Organization has hired SR SRF to complete a planning process to implement the RTCC in partnership with the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Uh, the RTCC will include representatives from transportation and human service providers, as well as other social service organizations and agencies from across an eight county South Central Minnesota region. Uh, the purpose of the RTCC is to coordinate the provision of transportation services throughout the region. Uh, as of yesterday, I reached out to SRF and um, 
Uh, as of yesterday, Brown, Martin, and LeSueur County had passed the resolution. Uh, Blue Earth County and Nicollet County are considering it today. And September 1st, Fairbolt, Waseca, and Wattenwatt are planning to take action. So the resolution is attached in your packet. Uh, we have had staff from Human Services participating in this process. Uh, there is no funding commitment by the county to pass this resolution. This just takes it to the next uh, stage. So I would recommend that uh, the board approve the resolution. been through that process with our transit organiza organization too. They plan more than they act. <laughs> Mr. Chair, on that question, Marie, can you just fill us in on how the transit use is going? Um, well, again, the line is our provider for transit, so it's their solution, not it's their numbers. Yeah. Um, they have been free since the COVID pandemic. Probably the same reason it takes five months for us to fix a road. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions? It's a resolution, so call the roll. Kemp? Yes. Carl? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Bretto? No. Fuller? Yes. Next item, Mr. Chair, is a resolution appointing the Nicollet County Recorder and Register of Titles. Minnesota Statute 375A-1205 provides a process for making certain elected county offices appointed. Uh, with the retirement uh, this past summer uh, of elected county recorder Kathy Conlon, the board approved a resolution on July 14th making the Office of County Recorder and Register of Titles appointed. Under this statute, a petition uh, was allowed to be filed within 30 days of adoption of the resolution rescinding the board's action. There was no petition filed. Uh, statute also states that the duties of an elected official required by statute whose office is made appointive must be discharged by the county board of commissioners acting through department head appointed by the board for that purpose. Reorganization, reallocation, delegation, or other administrative change or transfer does not diminish, prohibit, or avoid the discharge of duties required by statute. So basically it says the duties get transferred to a department head and uh, the county is able to reorganize as we see fit, but the duties still must be fulfilled. Uh, the attached resolution merges the duties of county recorder and register of titles into the property and public service department and appoints property and public service director Mandy Lankhammer as the Nicollet County recorder and register of titles. That reg resolution is attached, and I would recommend its approval. Move the resolution. Who was the second? Jack. Jack. Discussion? Question? Mandy, can I use these digits? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger card. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or really fine print. <laughs> Yeah, she'll still be property and public service director, but with that said, uh, her name will be on um, when you record a document. We are doing that, right? Um, it'll say Manny Lankhammer, County Recorder, Register of Titles. To the question, Mr. Chair, on the motion, uh, will there be any compensation awarded uh, because of these new titles, this new title? No. Um, uh, the, the amount of added duties uh, does not um, generate a need for position reclassification. 
Uh, the recorder's office is a fairly small uh, department and operation within the county. And in the past, when we've merged small departments like veteran services into health and human services and um, emergency management in the sheriff's office, that did not generate a change in, in compensation for that department head. Just to dig a little deeper, the uh, salary that was paid to the former recorder, those monies go to where? So uh, the, the staffing plan right now is um, we do have a supervisor uh, within the recorder's office. Uh, that position will remain the same. Uh, we have several vacancies. We're actually going to fill two of them, um, two of the three vacancies we have. Uh, so the uh, past uh, recorder that was a department head, earning department head salary, uh, that position will no longer be paid at the department head level. It will be paid at a, a much lower level. Uh, generating a savings of, oh, let's say forty thousand dollars approximately. Thank you. Now, Mandy's not going to have to sign off on every document, right? No. Those people. Stand. Yeah, you, you. In statute, you're allowed to deputize sure. um, your staff that have that authority to sign off. So that's, that's what, what I we've assumed. Yes. Yeah, that's what we've uh, we're, have always been doing, really. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Call the roll. Pass. Yes. Caller? Yes. Morrow? Yes. Lipke? Yes. General? Yes. Okay, Ryan, number three. Next item is in regards to the CARES uh, funding and implementing a business assistance program. Uh, as you know, the county received $4.1 million of federal CARES. Uh, funds to assist with the cost associated with responding to the COVID pandemic. Uh, business assistance grants are eligible expenditures of the Federal CARES Act funds under the U.S. Treasury guidance, a business assistance program that provides grant assistance to eligible for-profit and non-profit businesses in Nicollet County that can demonstrate being financially impacted by the COVID pandemic uh, is, has been handed out to you today. Uh, the board also reviewed um, a version of it uh, last week at our workshop. Uh, the application uh, would be uh, administered starting September 14th and due October 2nd. It would be online. Um, uh, there would, assuming the board uh, hires uh, Baker Tilly on the next action item, uh, Baker Tilly will be assisting us on this process. Um, Baker Tilly will host two webinars uh, during the application period to answer questions uh, that applicants may have. Uh, they've also just sent me here recently a frequently asked question um, document that we'll have on our website. Uh, what we plan to do if the board approves this today is we'll start marketing it this week and, and communicate with our cities uh, to get the word out. Uh, we'll also do press releases and put it on social media and our website. Um, Again, attached is the resolution uh, approving the program that you have in front of you. Uh, one item that I would like to point out in the resolution, I don't know that it needs to be in there or not. I, I put it in there merely for flexibility. Um, where on the second, be it further resolved, it says, after consultation with the Nicollet County Finance Director and County's Program Consultants, the Nicollet County Administrator is authorized to approve the final list of grant award recipients for this program. Um, if, if the board wants to do the official approval, you certainly can. Uh, August, um, excuse me, October 2nd is when they're due. Our board meeting, I believe, is the 13th of October that month. Um, I, I think we'll have the final list ready for board approval then. Uh, there's some vacations in there that we're working around that may delay some of that, but uh, if not, um, it would be extended uh, to our next board meeting, which would be the end of October. I'd, I'd like to make the process faster than that. Mm -hmm. So the board could either um, approve it on the 13th. If we're not ready, give me the authority uh, either now or then uh, to approve it or we schedule a special meeting uh, to have the board formally approve the list. So. Yes, sir. Having the administrator do the final approval, I would ask that the board be notified of who the recipient was. Right, absolutely. The, um, 
obviously the recipients and amounts is public data, so that would be provided to the board. Mr. Chair, I'll move the resolution. Motion and a second. Discussion? Well, Mr. Chair, I think I've shared with the uh, members and I know some of you probably have visited your businesses too along the way. And um, I'm very pleased to see that uh, you've extended this up to $10,000 because that can have a great impact on some of our businesses here in Nicollet County. And with respect to Commissioner Morrow's uh, comment, I think it's important that this board sees who is taking advantage of this, um, just like you did with property taxes, mm -hmm. uh, with property tax relief. And also, is it in here anywhere saying that federal taxes will be due on this money? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I tried to read it two or three times, but where, what number is that on? So in the, in the plan, uh, under acknowledgments and data privacy, uh, yeah. Nicollet, Nicollet County will issue grant recipients and IRS Form 1099. These grant funds are taxable. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then yes. asking Mr. Chair if you'll allow Yeah, it. go ahead, Jack. Um, when Baker Tilly holds these webinars or seminars with businesses who are interested, I take it, right? Correct. That yep. information about those businesses is not shared beyond Baker Tilly, correct? Correct. I mean, Baker Tilly can't say, oh, gee, look at this nice group of businesses that we can promote ourselves in other ways, shape, or form to. Right. They, they will, to my knowledge, they will not disclose the participant list, but uh, there is an acknowledgement in here and in the application that applicant acknowledges that some data provided for this grant funding may be public and will be governed by the Minnesota Data Practices Law. So businesses should be aware that this, these are public funds and some of the information uh, could become public if requested. That much I understand. I just want, I don't know exactly. What does Baker Tilly do for a living every day? They are a large uh, company. Uh, they just merged actually with Springstead. Um, and as the board knows, um, Baker Tilly is our municipal bond advisor. They were just here, actually last meeting, I believe, when we sold refunding bonds. That's part of their, uh, part of the services they provide. They also provide uh, a wide variety of <coughs> other government services, such as um, uh, consulting, organizational structure, um, financial uh, guidance, what's auditing. it? Auditing. Um, a wide variety of services. Uh, the ones that would be provided or available to us are in the next action item. Uh, so they're they're largely a, a consultant and financial advisor for uh, units of government in the United States. And, and I'm St. Paul. Excuse me. St. Paul Sorry, is where they're from. We were just. They're out of the sidebar. They are they are a company that helps us. Because we don't have the personnel or the time to be able to do this, and that's great. All I'm asking is that when they talk to businesses, that they don't use that contact to glom onto those businesses somehow and, and push okay. their own and push their own uh, services. No, I'm, I'm not even business. certain that they work with the private sector. I believe they're strictly a, a public public sector advisors. Thank you. So one question, Ryan, say someone got $6,000 out of uh, the government previously. They could apply here and get another four? So in the language, um, Commissioner Drannell assisted with this as well. It, there's many ways to word this and look at yeah. this, but to try to make it as, I hate to say fair, but as fair and equitable as possible. Uh, in the acknowledgement piece, I believe it's where it is. No. Second here. Uh, where did I put it? Eligible expenses. Ineligible. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Um, 
The, the grant amount requested cannot have been previously reimbursed by another federal or state program. For example, if the applicant received PPP loan and used it to cover rent expenses from March, April, and May of 2020, this grant may not be used to cover rent expenses for March, April, and May of 2020, but could be used to cover rent expenses for June of 2020. Okay, thank you. So, so no double dipping. That kind of answers my question. Mm -hmm. Other questions? It, it really is. It. Any more discussion? Call to roll. Yes. Yes. Carl. Yes. Cookie. Yes. 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 Okay. And the last item related to this action you just took uh, would to be would be to approve a master service agreement with Baker Tilly. Um, that was provided uh, to you here today and by email. Uh, this agreement basically allows um, uh, the county to use Baker Tilly as a consultant and advisor uh, throughout the CARES funding process up to a dollar amount of $50,000. Um, there's several things that we possibly could use them for as we move along to get clarification and to assist with auditing and, and those sorts of, sorts of things. Um, for the business assistance piece, they're putting a not to exceed of 29,750 in there. Uh, I, I don't believe it's gonna be that much because we've done a lot of the legwork here already. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they're involved from the very beginning of building these plans, but we had it basically ready for them. So it should be much, uh, much less than that. Um, so I would recommend that the board approve that uh, agreement and allow me to uh, sign off on that and that it would be approving the uh, business assistance portion and then the additional funds should Heather or I need assistance from them. And this can be paid for with the CARES funding that we received. I'll move that. Second. Motion and second, any discussion? And you're, you're comfortable with the dollar price that they're telling you? Yes, I'm very comfortable. We've okay. gotten great lot. service actually from them already without having the contract signed and um, uh, I did get a quote from a, a regional per potential provider that was double this okay. for just so the business question. Baker Tilly uh, takes the risk of liability and assumes that liability and takes it off county staff in our hands. Right. And we need it's like buying an insurance policy or something. Exactly. Okay. And there is a cost. That has that. value. Sure. Everything. Yeah, really, I'm very happy with the price okay. that they're offering. More discussion? Call the roll. Yes. Carl. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you. Passes. Well, that is it for me today, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, since we had our last meeting, I went to two ISG drainage seminars, and they were pretty good, except for the one lady that kept breaking up. Uh, we had, what, two budget meetings, Terry, probably? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the workshop. And of all things, besides the gun club, I've been getting calls about issues with the DOT on the Highway 14 expansion and on safety on Highway 15. Actually, two different parties on Highway 15. And visited with Peter and Zach a little bit. Hopefully they were going to contact the people who had the problems. Terry? Like you just said, John, uh, Two budget meetings. Uh, we had a, a meeting, the St. Peter liaison meeting uh, Marie and I were in, our St. Peter. Uh, also, uh, Marie and I both uh, participated in the uh, fresh food distribution last Friday. And if, Mr. Chair, if you just give me one moment here. Uh, we have an email from Leah that uh, 204 households were served, which is the highest count they've had for a fresh food Friday. In the past three years and that 67 of those households were first-time visitors so I just would like to acknowledge all the volunteers who are out helping and the great leadership that Leah has shown and on that note my wife helped in Brown County Wonderful. went across the border Danny since my
our last gathering of reports, I had a statewide emergency communication board's finance meeting, our board workshop, which we were all in attendance of, and I had the uh, ship quarterly meeting also. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Marie. Oh, right, that's right. <laughs> um, once it gets set up, it goes really fast, but getting it set up takes the volunteers. So if anybody likes to bust down produce, they're certainly welcome. Um, Mandy helped us with chairs. Um, I also attended the Zoom meeting for the elected women, meets monthly, uh, food distribution. And then yesterday, I sat through AMC's Carriage Act webinar oh. for a couple of hours. Um, Jack? Thank you, Mr. Chair. August 14th, uh, the canvassing and primary vote, which uh, our election officials, Jackie, told us was very well um, completed. A lot of people voting via mail and more expected on November 3rd. Uh, we had our Minnesota Valley Action Council meeting, the workshop, of course, uh, another Greater Mankato Goat meeting where I shared with you folks via email some of the reports that have been coming in from the various uh, entities belonging to that board. Our Travers to Sue meeting and of course today's county board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. No report from the Republican Convention for you or Pardon me? no report. You're not carrying any report from the Republican Convention, I assume. I was watching the twins last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. If I just could acknowledge uh, the work of uh, Health and Human Services helping our schools getting started, as I'm hearing around the state, there are differing levels of county support, and it sounds like our folks are doing a bang-up job. Wonderful. The other? I, I'd also parrot that, but in addition, the county attorney's office has been making good communication with a lot of players within the community on a lot of issues, mm -hmm. and again, I really appreciate that. I think those building of relationships are incredibly important for all of us going forward. So I want to offer our county attorney and her staff, those that have been doing this work, uh, a thank you for that. Okay. Brian, any meetings and conferences? Everything is by virtual meeting processes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, motion on per diems? Move it. I'll move per diems and expenses. Second, Motion second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Uh, move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Mr. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Um, if I just wanted to report, to follow up on the reports on the food distribution, oh. um, the backpack school supply, um, we will be announcing a winner shortly for in the county. I got a couple of. Um, later donations that we need to add to the totals for the county department winner. I think we have a new winner um, from last year. Um, but the distribution of backpacks will happen on Thursday to the families that signed up. And so thank you to the board for uh, partic participating and supporting those efforts um, to serve kids and families that need those back to school supplies. So thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Take a five minute break or start right away with drainage. Okay, let him in. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to yes. step out one moment, but please go ahead. Okay. Maybe do you want to take a couple minutes just to let the crowd sure. yeah. settle sure. in? Sure. Sign in anyway, so take a little bit. Okay. That's five minutes, John. Okay. Drainage Authority meeting has come to order. Jackie, you're up. We got some business before that. Oh, nope. yeah. Sorry. We have an agenda. Yeah, consent agenda. Let's move the consent agenda. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes. And number two is what we're on, right?
morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. The purpose of today's um, hearings are for ditch cleaning requests for three separate ditches. Those ditches are 16A, County Ditch 24A, and County Ditch 48A. Uh, we will handle each one of those individually and in that order. Um, if I could, there's one, there was one to set the hearing um, for a ditch cleaning. Was that afterwards? Oh, is that the first agenda I item? For, I'm sorry, I thought that was after. <laughs> oh, that's fine. 16A is first, right? Because this, no, no, this, this is the public hearing. This is the public okay. hearing. This is the public hearing. Okay. To set a public hearing. I'm sorry about that. So the first thing on the agenda is to <laughs> set the date for a, an additional public hearing for an additional cleaning for 30A, and I'd like to set that for September 8th at 10 a.m. Move it. Motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passes. Okay, now on to the public hearing. <laughs> like I said, it's for those three ditches, 16A, 24A, and 48A, and we will do those in those orders. Nate Henry will be um, presenting the, the cleaning information. This meeting has been noticed to all landowners by mail only as um, publication and posting is not required for this meeting. That mailing was sent out on August 10th, 2020. Um, so I would ask Nate Henry to come up to present the first ditch cleaning for 16A. Good morning, Nate. Good morning. Um, County Ditch 16A, I received a repair request from Dave Winninger to clean a section of this ditch. Um, it's not very large, approximately 6,000 feet. And um, he is one of the major affected landowners that own property along this section. And the last time this section of ditch was cleaned was 25 years ago. So uh, that puts a little bit of perspective on what type of condition it is. Um, it's common to clean ditches every 12 to 15 years. Um, longer than that, the sediment just builds up and it costs more to do. Questions for Nate? We'll open the public hearing. Any comments on 16A? Okay, is there a motion? Move it. No, you gotta close the public oh, hearing. Oh, sorry. Public hearing is closed. Board discussion? I think. Commissioner Kolar is moved and I'll second. Okay. Motion to second. Now any discussion? Questions for Nate or anybody else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Okay. Um, the next we'll one, 24A, I believe, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so similar thing here on 24A. I received a repair request uh, to clean this ditch. Um, the map that you have, the area that was petitioned for would be starting on the north end of the ditch along Timber Lane, coming south into the center of Section 22 is what was originally requested by the landowner. I have met with the landowner as well as looked at the rest of the ditch and I have indicated the entire ditch in green is uh, in need of a clean out and if we're going to be doing a small section for that property down there it would be wise to do the rest of the ditch while the equipment is there. A um, little background on this ditch. This was petitioned in 2017 and at that time the petition was denied and part of that petition was a tree removal project along Timber Lane that had because that had never been done and the cost of the tree removal project was $15,000 $15, from Cars Tree Service and the clean out was denied but the tree removal was approved and that work has been done and the trees are now gone. Um, the last time this ditch was cleaned was in 1991, so 29 years ago. And after the denial of that petition, um, there was some more discussion with the petitioning landowner about how to move forward to, to do the project or prove it needs to be cleaned. So I reached out to an engineering firm to uh, see if they would provide services to survey the ditch and give us an exact number um, in hundredths and tenths of material that is in the ditch. And at that time in 2017, 
we would have uh, been able to do that for $10,700. And that would strictly be a report saying they were out and surveyed the ditch and they determined this much dirt is in there. So at that time we decided not to do that because $10,700 could be put to better use towards cleaning the ditch. So there was no action taken with that. So um, that's where we're at right now. And uh, I think um, there'll be some folks that would like to talk about this one. Okay, open the public hearing. If you wanna speak, state your name, address. And there's a three minute limit through this also. Soon, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. Please, thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Michaels uh, at 39857 506th Street, North Mankato. I'm a landowner along this ditch system. Uh, you were given three pieces of paper here earlier from uh, m the majority of the landowners that are along this ditch system. Uh, I am told that I am to speak on their behalf. Uh, I have come here today on behalf of the majority of the landowners along County Ditch 24A. A couple years ago, the buffer was forced onto every landowner. Land that was productive is now not, nor collecting rent or, or any income. Also, a couple years ago, there was a cleanup of trees along this ditch system that we are still paying assessments on. Uh, personally, me, between the buffer and this trees, uh, trees that they took out, which needed to be done, uh, I just on my 160, I'm paying $5,000 in assessments on top of the taxes. Uh, so it's, you know, we just don't need an, another big bump on top of everything else here. Where's all this money supposed to come from? Uh, and now with this COVID and below break-even commodity prices times, a person with less than 5% ownership in the system wants to set us all back some more. Where, where is this money supposed to come from? Uh, no, we are not naive enough to, to the fact that, to know that some of this ditch system needs some work. Uh, just a more limited approach is what we ask on behalf of these landowners. Uh, until commodity prices rebound a little bit. Our proposal is to fix, there's two main washouts, and uh, I don't know, Nate probably knows where they are. There's two, not washouts, but slides. And uh, the bridge needs to be fixed, and to clean from the bridge south to Mr. Burnett's land. That would alleviate a lot of the problems that he uh, tends to have, I guess, with that, uh, with that little bit of ditch that he has. So that's my presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, anybody else want to come up? Close the public hearing. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I also have a letter from a landowner that was mailed to me and it is from Nate Johnson and his address is 47874 380th Street, Nicollet, Minnesota 56074. To whom it may concern, I don't believe the ditch needs to be cleaned. It appears to be working as it is intended. Um, no amount of cleaning will help when we get five inches of rain at a time. We are in the middle of a pandemic and do not need any more bills right now. Not all of us sold our land for houses and are flush with cash. Nate Johnson. Thank you, Jackie. Anybody else? Uh, I'm Steve Burnett, and I'm the one that wanted the ditch cleaned, and it hasn't been cleaned in a lot of years. And I see their point, but I don't care what to do as long as you get it working from mine down and those slides have to be taken out of there and there might need to be some work done on the end by the road down there because that's really in bad shape and as, as long as they go along there and, and clean out wherever it needing where it's blocked 
then don't do the whole ditch, but it does need cleaning. The whole ditch does need it. But I see their point, but got to get them slides out of there and got to be made to work. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Good for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. So the, the depth of the sediment in the bottom or the depth of the banks? It's the original. It just looks to me like it's flat. I mean, the the photos kind of wash out. Photos. They wash out the depth. Looking at, um, well. It's fairly deep, Jack. I it's was out it's there. It's pretty deep. It ranges from, I don't know, 20 to 40 feet in different areas. Uh -huh. um, the culvert that you see in there, I forgot to include that in my original report. Um, regardless of, of what happens to the clean out, that culvert needs to be repaired. Um, because the ends, it, what, what's happening is it's a concrete pipe that was put in place 80 years ago and they never tied the ends together. So what happens is the frost moves and they separate, they leak fill and the top is collapsed. Uh, you can maybe drive a four-wheeler across it. So there's large amounts of dirt there that have to be removed and the crossing has to be fixed one way or another. Um, as far as dirt in the ditch, uh, I started down by Timber Lane and I drove up through behind um, down into section 22 and it, it varied from uh, two feet of water in the uh, crossing in section 15 to uh, this one being by that I just described to you has about three feet. Um, so as far as picking out one spot to dig a slide here and there, um, if we dig out a slide here and then you just leave the rest of it that hasn't been cleaned in 30 years, that's going to silt in. You're going to be back to square one in a year. Um, if, if cleaning the entire ditch is not desired, um, at the very minimum, I would, I would say we could start at uh, where the petitioner's property outlets and go from the center of section 22 down to the outlet of the ditch would be the next best bet, along with fixing that ditch crossing. And I was out there with Nate, and there, that crossing is, is a danger. I think everybody would agree with that. And there is some spots that are pretty bad. Mr. Chair, yes. Nate, could I ask you to use the pointer on the map so that it's real clear about all the references? Not on the, not on the pictures, but there was a map section that was included in that, I think. And can you, can you guide me through that so I'm clear about that? So what I what I had said about the very minimum cleaning would be uh, from Timber Lane would be from Timber Lane, come along the ditch and then you go straight south to where the ditch will terminate in the center of section 22. If uh, if the landlords do not want us to go uh, west for that quarter of a mile, um, we don't have to. I think it would be an excellent idea if we do because we'll stop and then that sill to fill in what we just cleaned. But at the very minimum, I think we should come to the center of Section 22 to where Steve Burnett's tile outlets are. Otherwise, spot cleaning random spots in the middle of the ditch will work for a year or two, and then we'll be right back next year doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, double the cost. Terry, did you make it out for a visit to the Nate, um, if I could ask you a question, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, could you just tell me the culvert you're de sorry the culvert you're describing? Um, is, would that be part of this type of process, or is that a different process? To it would be a ditch repair. Um, granted, this is considered ditch repair, but I I could do it at any time. But I would just like to include it now to get it approved, so we don't have to write another. So, repair. so if I can understand the priority, culvert, the shorter section, the full project are those right? Those are your really three I mean the culvert has to get re there's no reason to clean the ditch if you don't fix the culvert because it's completely collapsing obstructing the flow so. okay uh, public hearing is closed but we have a gentleman Um, to 
bridge that I've been describing uh, is right here on the section line. Yep, it's north of that. Yep, right there. Right there. Okay, yep. fix that culvert, which we all know that that's bad, and then work south, which is a quarter of a mile of a deep peat bog. That's where all of these problems are coming. You clean that out, and the water should sail, because you get up into around 13 there, that's a huge deep ditch, and it's, it looks like it was just dug you know, yesterday. It, it doesn't look bad at all. And then you get around the corner, and there's one slide. Other than that, it doesn't look that bad. I understand from the landowners. You know. Mr. Chair? Yes, Perry. So, so Nick, could we, could the culvert prod, part of this be approved today? Or is that a separate that process? That can be approved anytime. That can be approved anytime. Okay, yep. thank you. That slide is to the north of where that culvert is. There's that another, slide. I might have a picture of that, Abby. Could you pan, keep, could you pan through that so I'll tell you when to stop? Okay, right here. So this is looking north if you're standing on the crossing. So there's an additional bank slide or, well, bank slide and water running over the ditch. You can see where the corn rows were planted around it because it's eroding back into the field. Okay. Take that off and it don't look that bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. This ditch has uh, many repairs in the past of water flowing over the banks. There's a lot of surface intake pipes, uh, so like a 24-inch pipe coming into the ditch just to take the water and hold the bank from falling in. Um, and that's where a lot of the dirt and silt comes from. It's not perfect, but it's better than the whole bank falling in. Sure. Mr. Chair. Yes. So, Nate, if I can understand. So could we, yeah, let's keep that picture if we could have before. Thank you. Um, to the culvert, there's discussion of whether to clean the whole thing. I thought I heard you say something earlier about the number of slides that are in this system. Now we're just hearing about fix this one and another slide. What, I'm, I'm getting lost on what the, all the different options are here. Typically in the past when we've piecemealed projects and did a little bit here and there we've ended up coming back and coming back until okay. it's all done versus mm -hmm. either you do the whole thing or you do a good portion of it so that you don't have to do the whole project you can come back at a later date and do the rest if um, if that's what people would like to do well I don't believe we can wait for four dollar corn to do some work on this So, Madam County Attorney, if we don't approve the whole suggestion, we can piecemeal it and... The board has heard a presentation from, well, it's got the petition. It's heard input from other landowners. Yes. It's heard the recommendation of the ditch inspector. And now it's time for the board to put together its recommendation so you can um, address all part or none of what the request is, okay. but I would echo what Commissioner Morrow indicated to be very clear on what you're authorizing for the cleaning repair. Because I'm, I'm also with Commissioner Morrow in terms of understanding the different options that might be before you and what you might motion. So there's a culvert that needs to be repaired. There's a number of slides that are talked about. And the crossing. And a, the crossing. There's. And there's a smaller suggested portion for cleaning and the larger portion. I'm unclear whether those slides would be encompassed in that smaller portion or not. And that might help um, articulate mm -hmm. what's going on in terms of the motion. And it might be helpful if I could suggest, if Abby is comfortable with it, that Nate would actually um, take, as you're formulating your motion, take his cursor or take the actual mouse and take control of where he's specifically talking about on that map so that everyone is very clear what's being discussed. So Mr. Chair, if I follow up and if Nate, you could do that, 
Yeah, that's that's I, great. I, guess. I envision a motion. I envision supporting a motion in which the culvert gets done, and at least some portion gets finished. But I'd like to hear from Nate what, again, what portions would we be talking about? I'm going to pull up the map. Of the so uh, perhaps a motion uh, could include cleaning the open ditch from Timber Lane down through Section 15 and going south into Section 22 where it terminates and then go west approximately one mile would encompass the clean out and also the motion to include fixing the ditch crossing that we had talked about on the center line of Section 15 and 22. Or the section line, I mean, not center line. So, Nate, did you just describe the full project, or is that just a portion of the project? Well, that's a portion that sounds like the audience and people would like to do. And I, if we're going to do it, that's what I would feel most comfortable with. If, if people don't want to spend the money to do the entire project, this would take care of the petitioner's problem. It would take care of the ditch crossing. And it would cost less than doing the entire system. That is not the, that is what I propose. That may not be what everybody does, but I think that would be, uh, rather than piecemealing small sections, that would be the best bang for the buck as far as moving equipment in and digging. Mr. Chair, if I'm yes. right, the proposal we have before us is from. I haven't seen that proposal. I've the heard Burnett, about it. The, the only the request is to okay. clean out the ditch, right? Right. We have Burnett's petition. I have not yeah. seen the other proposal. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. cleaning that shorter section or portion of it would take care of all of the slides that have been mentioned? No, that would just take care of the petitioner's uh, concerns. The slides are beyond that. There's additional slides further on in the system that that doesn't encompass. And they can be addressed with a ditch repair at a later time. Um, that, that is some, that's a typical ditch repair we fix all the time. There's nothing special about that. Yes. I know this is irregular, and so <coughs> I ask for a ruling, but I'm a little confused between the discussion that Mr. Michaels brought up and his, I just want to be clear that I understand both sides of this, and could I ask him to display on the same map the area that he's talking about? Me? Well, just, I, I need to, no, no, I can't, I can't ask you yet. I just want to make sure that I'm staying within. I think because we're dealing with maps and requests <laughs> that may be nebulous in what we're talking about, I think it's appropriate to have that articulated on the map for what we're talking about. So having him just make that presentation would be appropriate. Would, would, is that acceptable, Nate? You okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Mr. Michaels, would you come up and... I, I can maybe show you... Well, no, I, He's tall or, enough. It's yeah, good. whatever. Yeah. You want to stand <laughs> in front of him, that's fine. I just, I just need to understand it in a visual way. Yeah, we can't really see that here. If there's, what you were looking at before, there was a slide like right there. Could you go over by Terry? I should come over this side. This is the one we all see. Okay, sorry. You all folks live with this. We don't see the. As what, what your drawing was, there was a slide right there, right? Yep. Okay. There's also another one right there in the middle of between there, and there's another one up here that I'm aware of. That's what I was told by the landowners. Those are the only ones in that whole system. But What's the worst is the bridge is right there where that X is. That needs to be, that's where the culvert, that's what you're talking about. Yep. That needs to be addressed. And then if, and this is a big peat bog right here. This is where all your problems are generated. So if we clean from, clean that slide, that slide, and that slide, and take from the bridge and clean the, the bottom down to Steve Burnett's land, which is down here, is our, our proposal. It might seem like a piecemeal, but uh, it's probably gonna last for years, potentially. Nate, do you have comments on that? Or do you have any questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just need to understand your proposal <clears throat> and 
So your proposal would be fix the crossing <coughs> and then merely go in and fix the slides. And then a quarter of a mile. A quarter of a mile cleaning, cleaning from Mr. Barnett's property north, to, north. The, to the bridge or to the culvert. It's a, it's a kind of a homemade bridge going across. Gotcha. Okay. That's where that culvert is washed out or bad. Okay. All right. Thank you. That, that's oh, that's the only question I have. It, yep. it, I mean, I, I just wanted to make sure. I thought I had it right. I just wanted to make sure that. This was the proposal from about 90% of the land. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Burnett, would that serve you? Yeah. I, all I want is this to work. But I, I know that down, down by the road, you know, that area down in there where it's before it goes into the creek is not in real good shape. But there is, there's got to be a lot of falls from my property to there because the ditch runs downhill. So it probably worked for now, but down there, it's not much of a, it's kind of a trail if you, I don't know if he's got pictures of that, but right along the road there. So it's not Mr. much. Mr. Chair? Yes. So to me, what is the most economical long term, even though it may cost a few extra dollars now, to get this thing done? If you were to not take into consideration low commodity prices, cleaning the entire ditch system, if you were to take into consideration then, cleaning that section I described, and if, if you really don't want to spend much, well, we'll do whatever the board decides. I'm just here to provide the facts and information and I guess when I was asking in terms of economical, the best investment is your first proposal is what I think I'm hearing. Right. The ditch hasn't been cleaned in 30 years, and um, they still clean over time. That's It was needed in 2017 when it was denied, and that that's what I would recommend at the very minimum to, to serve the petitioner's request cleaning that shorter segment and repairing the crossing, I think would best fit his concern. Yes, Terry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm trying to update, I'm just trying to understand this repair process. Um, <clears throat> I hear what you're saying. I mean, in terms of economical, it may be cost effective to do the whole thing, but it may not be economically feasible for the folks who pay for it. I think you and I, probably agree on that point that that it sounds like everyone is saying they agree on the culvert and perhaps even they agree on well if you want to just do the slides and every, if everyone will agree on doing the slides we're good what I don't understand about our process is and maybe Commissioner Kolars this gets to your point as well I don't know what the cost difference is on any of these uh, I don't know if anyone in the room knows. They just know that it's, it would be cheaper to do the slides than to do what you're saying. But I don't know if we know the dollar differences. Is that fair? Right, that's a fair assessment. Um, usually, I'll just use a, a, a real rough estimate here. Um, if we were to clean the entire ditch system, we're probably looking at around fifty to sixty thousand for the entire system. For the entire system, yep. okay. And that would be the that includes the crossing. No, repair? nope. That's just ditch cleaning and leveling. Just the okay. okay, and that's the entire ditch or the that'd portion the, that you should. That'd be the entire system. Okay. Now that's what sixteen thousand feet is. I don't have an exact measurement on the shorter section. Um, it, it looks to be about a mile and a half. You're looking at a, about twenty-five grand. What I'm worried about, and I think it's along the lines of what Commissioner Kolar is saying, is if we were to approve just doing the slides and the culvert today, and then we find out two weeks from now, you know what, the difference in that cost and the cost of doing that portion, that mile 
and a half. Maybe all the landowners say, okay, fine, you know, let's do that portion because we're going to come back and have to do it again anyway, and that's Jack's economical point. Well, the, the problem with scooping the slides out is that we'll, we'll take out the slide where there might be four feet of dirt, but then where do you stop? Because you'll right. take out this slide area, and then over here there's going to be two feet of dirt in the ditch. Well, I guess you just leave a two-foot ridge of dirt, and, you know, you go on from there. So where do you start and where do you stop if you just pick a few spots? That's why I recommended doing one, one complete segment so you can start and have it clean from one end to the other, and maybe the other branches uh, can get addressed at a later date when those landowners uh, want to. Just for you. Yeah, uh, 12 to 15 years um, for, for people that are aggressive in it. And then, of course, if you're doing it every 15 years, you're taking out less dirt, you move faster, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Taking out more dirt, you, rather than taking one scoop with the bucket, you may take two or three, and then leveling it in the field, uh, it's going to, of course, take a lot longer to level it. So. Well, I wouldn't say the ditch is in jeopardy of failing. It, uh, the surrounding cropland that drains into it is in jeopardy of drowning. Mm -hmm. And Marie, the ditch next to me, I think it was 50 years since it was cleaned, but that was way in the top end of it. Less land going into it. More questions for Nate? All well, I think if I might, Mr. Chair, um, what I'm hearing is an, an effort to do work that's needed to be done and at least arguably is twice overdue, 15 years to, to 30 years, and at the same time recognize the economic realities that are facing the landowners. And so I think what I hear you saying, Nate, is here is perhaps an acceptable, not acceptable, but a, a reasonable solution is to fix the culvert, address this section, don't just do the slides because that's probably, to Commissioner Kolar's point, not economically reasonable because you've got, you're not doing the full, the, right. the full job and you're still leaving parts unaddressed. It, you're probably gonna have to come back and do again anyway. So why not do the job right, but not do the whole ditch because that would be an expense that perhaps we don't have to impose upon the landowners at this time. So that's why I th what I hear Nate saying about the full ditch, sure, do the full ditch if the economics weren't in play, but the economics are in play. Well, m true. Mr. Chair, absolutely, They're, they always are, Jack, but I think that the, the mention, for example, of commodity prices, and we've heard this from a number of our um, landowners, if this is, if Nate's approach is one that you know, I think in, in some ways balances the need to do something about the ditch, the ditch needs to be repaired and maybe can do it in a way that has less of an impact upon farmers at a time in which they're already hitting, being hit, might be a reasonable compromise. Hmm, not a real confident one. It'd be less than $10,000. For the crossing you're talking. It's concrete, so we'll just dig the dirt off on top of it, um, sit on top of it with an excavator and push those sections of pipe together, assuming they're in good shape, which usually they are. Use a hammer drill to drill holes in it and then install adjustable ties and um, wrap it with fabric and mastic, cover it back up so it'll never move again. Second question is, does anybody know what, what's in the kitty for this dish system? Jackie? Um, I don't. Okay. I can certainly check that out. Okay, I'll track here a little bit. Huh? Um, I would say there's not an abundance of money in any dish system. Okay. There can, okay. can only 
Thank you. 20% of the benefits. I would rely on that. That's Michelle. Mr. Chair, might I suggest that it, it sounds to me like everyone wants to balance all of the interests that are involved, um, long-term, short-term economics, mm -hmm. that perhaps this matter be, con the, the dis final decision be um, delayed for two weeks with direction to staff to articulate on paper the three options that I understand to be on the table, the whole system, the partial pieces of the three slides and the culvert and then cleaning out the peat bog area or the longer section that Nate is recommending and put some actual numbers to paper. Jackie can look at what's in the, the kitty um, and then everyone is on the same page mm -hmm. for what you're actually considering in the costs involved and it would be a two week delay. Continue with this hearing. Mm -hmm. Continue the hearing, correct. The only question I have is you think that would limit you getting people to do that this fall yet? I don't think crops will be coming out in two weeks, so that shouldn't affect it. Mr. Chair, yes. I move continuation of this matter to our next regular meeting, our next, or well, drainage, our drainage authority meeting, which could be convened in two weeks, or well, our first meeting of the next month. I, I'd like to see more data and more clear. I just, I just think it's in everyone's mm -hmm. best interest to do it. That. Second. That would be my motion. Motion second. And second. I think this. you should put a time for that, a, a specific time. Oh, so because it's a continuation? Yeah. Should we make it uh, 10? Uh, we have a 10 o'clock hearing. 10.30. Make it 10.30? 10.15. 10.15. Okay. Yeah, what, sorry. 15 for the you can always start after. Right, but okay. So 10.15 on the? September 8th. 8th? Oh, okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Thank everyone for yes. your input, and we're trying to drill down, and we appreciate your patience with us also. We really do. So, County Ditch 48A. Michelle, do you want to comment on this? Jackie, this. Mr. Chair, um, before the board today is a public hearing on um, 48A. And <coughs> yesterday it was brought to my attention that there is an engineering report okay. um, where there is some additional work that um, is being recommended in the engineer report that I think we received on Friday. So there hasn't been a lot of time to gather the information and there may or may not need to be a separate decision made by the board that might need to be made before you order the repair. Okay. And that would need to be properly noticed and information presented to the board so that the board could consider that issue plus the repair issue. So in light of that fact, Mr. Chair, it would be my recommendation that if there are landowners here to speak on the, because it's, a, it's already been noted as a public hearing, if there are landowners here that wish to speak, that you um, either allow that or defer. Um, if they choose or they come back when we have the full hearing sure. again, hopefully in two weeks um, to have a better presentation to the board to address the um, recommendations of the engineer. So is there anyone here from 48A? Mr. Chair, before you do that, if I might ask yes. you and the county attorney, I'd be inclined to continue this hearing as well since that report just came in. I would hate to yes. say, well, you mm -hmm. spoke before you had all the information. Right. Okay. And so we're going to have to do this again in two weeks anyway. So just go right to I would portion. continue this. And, the, uh, and that's fine. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Unless yeah. um, I won't be able to make that next meeting. Okay. But uh, I have uh, been working on this for many years. And with the DNR and things, there is some issues in okay. the engineering thing. Also, I, uh, Nate, do you have any pictures of the ditch or the? No, I don't know. We don't have them. Okay, right I now. do have a little bit on my iPad here. I should have brought us pictures of it. Sir, if I could interrupt you just one second, because I think we can, Mr. Chair, I think we can open the public hearing. Yes. Yep. Okay. Let the, then Let you can come up and speak, it. and then we can continue the hearing. Sure. I'm and sorry to have interrupted you, sir. No, that's fine. And, and to be clear, the issues that I'm speaking about aren't necessarily addressing concerns that it, the cleaning isn't needed. It's just the procedural pieces that need to occur to get to what you've been working on. 
My name is Gene Dorn. Uh, I live in uh, Nicollet Granby Township, and uh, my address is a 42113 451st Avenue. Um, I've been working in over the DNR numerous times, and this ditch system, which is 48A, which goes through Duck Lake and drains directly into. Do you have maps in front of you? We do. Of 48A? Mm hmm. Um, we have it in our packet. Okay. All right. I'll try to bring up here, if I can pass this around to you, of uh, there's a situation where uh, there is a t uh, culvert going through. And uh, do we have Wi-Fi in here? Yes. Okay. Is there the public that it's yes, open? Yes, you'll have to log into it. Well, he's doing that. Would that be a bad deal to just con or to continue this for four weeks until Mr. Dorn might be available again? I hate. Okay. Um, I hate to push it off more okay. than it is. It's been a long time. Okay, um, that's fine. But well, uh, while you're waiting to log in, does the map that's on the electronic board here represent the areas? Are they familiar to you, and does that make sense to you? Yes, and I could probably stand up and point some of that. That out. would be Please helpful do that. if you could get us started there. Yep. Now, Nate may have to uh, reaffirm this. 48A is uh, up here, comes crosses under Highway 5, Corvo, comes down along here. It drains through the lake. And then actually 48A is a continuation of 48A through Duck Lake. And then down here, I'll get on this side so you guys can see it better. It, it joins out and it goes eventually into Middle Lake. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up not far from here and I trapped this in 1966. And I believe that's the last time that ditch was clean. That's 54 years ago. I've had the Who's the other guy that comes out with you, Nate? Nate Steve. Steve. He's been out different times over time, said that he was probably going to spray this, he was going to do different things. Uh, now with what DNR did with the outlet of Middle Lake, they raised it up two tenths, which is approximately two and a half inches. It is so wet along here. Thank you. The old-fashioned way. Yeah, it's, it is so wet along here that I'm really concerned we're only going to be limited to go in with an excavator when it freezes up. Mm -hmm. And then you can come into the issue with snow. This is so filled in with muck all the way across and then also out here. So that's been 54 years since this has been cleaned up. Up here, this originally was 48, and then I forget what year this was changed to 48A because it used to come along. The people that live up on this ditch are a little more concerned with the bottom end of this ditch and along number five, the water is so mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. And it takes so long to get out of here and with the rains we've been having for a number of years. Right down here, DNR has, when they acquired this fawning farm, there's a culvert going across. That culvert now, I have some pictures of it, is approximately two feet or better out of the ground. But it's a large culvert, because I used to trap here's where I live. I used to trap from here, I'd go through with a 17-foot canoe right through with the motor. I think it's a, I think it may be a 48-inch. And going through here, now, in the times that I've been there, that's been lowered a few times when it was private property, because whoever, the next door neighbor, when he crossed with his plow, he'd hook it with the plow. Mm -hmm. Have to be lower. Well, since DNR acquired this land, nothing's been done. It's really pushing up. Um, with the high water so far, it not, has not really restricted the water much. Uh, but it does help with sediment up here holding back and everything because it's not flowing through. Plus, this is all grown in all the way along. We've got muskrats in. There, we've got some trees growing in. There's so much sediment, it's unbelievable. 
So we need to get this out. Then I think our next thing is ditch 41, which is the outlet, and getting through Middle Lake up doing some other things, but that's a different hearing. But this is what I'm really concerned about, and Larry Wilking is in here, he's a neighbor, he lives right here. He has this land, we've got the same thing. We've got water sitting in this along five, and it's just not getting out of that lake the way it should. And like you say, you talk about ditches clean every 15, 20 years. The last time, because the first time I met with Jackie a number of years ago, she didn't realize that that was even a county ditch. And she told me, you open up a can of worms. Well, I probably did. <laughs> but nothing's ever been done. I met with the DNR, and I think that's with this hearing, Michelle, coming up, that uh, they are telling me, what are you going to do with the spoils? Well, I've got some elevation issues on some things when we flew it with the drone. There originally was, when I used to hunt there, we, it was a great place to stand for deer hunting because they'd always come on one side. Sure. Yeah. I mean, let's be realistic. <laughs> uh, I think in time, but that's something I guess you gotta follow through procedures of what it is. But I, I just wanted to tell you the situation that I think we are working with that are up here. I did do, do some, I used to own this here. I did some training with DNR to acquire this up here. But again, this is all flowing out. I've been out there since 1980, and in the last few years, I have never, well, it's a lot been since they raised that dike going out of Middle Lake, and with the wet weather, uh, we're fighting an issue if we don't get in this fall, and I don't think it's gonna happen this fall because of timing, and and the things that need to be done, but it's something to get started because it's really needs, something needs to be done because they don't want to end up like where John is up there on number 12. Underwater? Yeah, <laughs> so, but I guess that's about, Terry, any questions? questions? I, I do, thank you, Mr. Dorn. Uh, where's Doug Winter's property at? Okay, Doug Winter, and okay, we can, if you don't mind me talking, he's over here. Mm -hmm. And what Doug Winter did last year is he paid for that cookie cutter. He got permit from DNR. Mm -hmm. It helped us a lot. And what can you, is it on this map what he did? No, no. Okay. We'd have to get down to Middle Lake, okay. and I don't know if we have something. Of That's that. okay. But it's not this portion. No. And he come up into Wee Wee Bay over in here, and uh, that is a big issue. What that is, and I do feel in time. Because to me, this is a ditch system, 48A. Middle Lake goes out on, what is it, Jackie, 41? Ditch 4. Was, uh, ditch 4. four. Okay, four. ditch 4. To me, that's all part of a ditch system. What Doug Wunner did, he come along with a cookie cutter that DNR so many years ago said it was too costly. Now when I met with them last summer and last fall, they said they got to do something. The duck hunters are saying we can't get to those areas because they're, I said, the farmers are paying for this and the duck hunters that little bit of a hunting license. But anyway, he got that same cookie cutter come out of Northern Minnesota, come down. I think it cost him close to $10,000, but that's a short fix. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do think in time, they've done some studies, DNR on Minnesota Lake, Minnesota Lake I believe, of spray and Roundup, which is rodeo for it's aquatic you can, you can spray water and you're looking at killing that mm -hmm. rushes down to the root system and usually it can last from two to five years or better when you cut with a cookie cutter you're only cutting so many inches underneath right. rushes grow fast mm -hmm. plus it's still holding the sediment up right. so i'd like to but that is going to be a different here okay but, uh, but okay. this this is basically what we're at today Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Much clearer now. Terry, you got more questions? No, I. That, that's good. Sure. And yeah. Mr. Chair, given that he can't be here um, next, if we're going to do it in the two weeks, might he suggest? I suggest that he forward the pictures that he right. did want to show to Nate, and then those can be mm -hmm. before the board at the next hearing. Good okay. Idea. I would move to continue the I'll public second. hearing. Motion second to continue. Any discussion? And continue till 
10, September 8th at 10. 15. 15. Both of them at the same time? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I guess this four week to me makes no difference, but I'm looking at Steve, well, both Steve's on this ditch situation, the sooner they can get it done. I don't want to hold their press anymore. Okay. Well, that's very nice of you. I do do not think that mine is going to happen for a year or two, okay, mm -hmm. because of what has to be done. So that's why I just assume if you're meeting at two weeks and not extending. It's and going to be an early fall, so. So I, I just need to be clear about yeah, what that's, I heard them. You then, that, yeah, let me make sure, Jackie, you, you have your hand up. <laughs> I just want to make sure, clear that I think what, what Mr. Dorn is saying that this ditch system could go for four yes. weeks, but yes. in two weeks we don't we're still going to have the twenty four A. They don't rely on each other. Yeah. So I just oh, want to make clear on that. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so Jackie, if you could yes. wait one second, Mr. Dorn, would do you want us to continue this further than two weeks so you can be here? That would be great. I, I just didn't want to hold up. There, no I think we do that. I, I think we accommodate that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is, is that going to work for you? Mm -hmm. I think it will. So would that be the 20 seconds second is there anybody else that wants to speak to this that that would be okay with that the 20 second 20 second for this here sure. that would and be so, okay. one thing i want to note is statutorily we do not need to re-notice this because you're going to continue it right. so make right. sure that the landowners that are here jot that down so they will they know when to show up for the next meeting and uh since we have to set a time specific mm -hmm. on the 22nd is there anything going on on the 22nd? So 10, 10 would 10 be more recommended. You're making that. That would be my motion. Your motion. Yeah, that, uh, my motion, we continue this hearing on this ditch. I'll September 22nd, 10 o'clock. Acceptable with both yes. motions. Any yes, more discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, so oh, sorry, one question. Um, I don't know what's legal on this, but right where I live on number five, one mile from mm -hmm. 111 yeah, yeah. on the corner. Mm -hmm. The ditch comes down from north and goes to the east into Duck Lake. Okay, right where my driving is to the field, there's beavers always building up stuff. Am I legally, can I get rid of them myself or does somebody have to do that or how does that work? <laughs> I mean, they, they got piled of stuff, the water backs up towards my pump. Sure. My pumps, I got a pump to pump 80 mm -hmm. acres. Yeah. It's about this high out of the ditch. Yeah. That thing's been buried in water. What happens, that keeps running around and around. Sure. sure. So, Nate, can we talk about that separately? That's not part of this ditch repair, is it? Quick answer. Go ahead. I, whenever I do beaver removal or there's potential to trap or destroy beaver, usually you can notify the DNI officer, Nicholas, let them know where you live and what you're going to do. And the same day or the next day, they can issue you a permit to give you guidance on how to handle it. I thought they weren't protected anymore. Exactly what I did last year is I had beavers come in and, uh, and uh, wrecked by a pond. And uh, you gave me a guy, a, a guy's name from Nicholas. Yep. And I paid him, and he came and he trapped him, and we oh. just notified the DNR and his laundry. Care of well, we can continue. This is a good question. Uh, this is about this issue. Uh, so we'll talk about how to help you, and I think Nate's advice is. Okay. Good advice, Mr. Burnett. So let, that's my motion for yes. continuing the hearing. Second. Any discussion? This is for the 22nd. Mm -hmm. For the 22nd. 10 10 10 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay. I guess we're going to clear the courtroom? Yes. Be, you have to read your... Oh, read the bold part now. This portion of the meeting is closed for attorney client privilege pursuant to Minnesota Statute Chapter 13D to discuss litigation regarding the improvement project on Nicola County Ditch 62A. So, we'll bring this back, reopen the drainage authority meeting. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.